triangle series will cover three different types of triangles. We will cover the three round, um, excuse me, the three double crochet traditional granny square. This is where each cluster you make is worked with three double crochets. And we will do a change of color and we'll also look at a solid color for a couple of rounds. The techniques that we covered in the Granny Square series can be applied to the triangle and as we begin working these triangles you will see how that can be applied here. We will not only do the three double crochet triangle, but we will also do the four double crochet triangle, granny triangle. And the only difference is, is that each of our clusters are made with four double crochets instead of three. Now, if you compare a four double crochet with a three double crochet, they are approximately the same size. It's just that the four double crochets fills in more of the gaps. You can see that the three double crochet has a little bit more gap to it than the four double crochet. And the last triangle we will be looking at today is referred to as the quilting triangle. That is because it's going to be, it's usually used to fill in awkward spaces in a flat piece of work that you might be making. For example, around um, an octagon or a hexagon, and you need to fill in an awkward space that's left over to create symmetry in your overall work. For example, if you were to have a couple of pieces here, let's just use these two granny squares and they come together on the diagonal like this, then you want to fill in this space here to give yourself a straight edge. So what you might do is create a quilting triangle to fill that in like that. Now this triangle isn't quite as big to fill in this whole space, but I think you can understand the concept that once you join it, it's going to stretch and then fill in this entire space. Or you can use a quilting triangle just to make a motif on its own. You can make them individually and whip stitch them together. Like that. And then you can end up with some pretty cool geometric designs, depending on how you place them. So let's get started. So the first one we're going to look at is the three double crochet granny triangle, which is the traditional method of uh, working a granny triangle. And we're going to just focus on working our triangles today on the same side. Again, if you want to rotate your work back and forth every round, um, please refer back to the granny square methods of rotating the work. I think it's number three in the series and you can see how to go about doing that. Today, we're just going to focus on creating and changing colors for same side as seen here. All right. So I am using an eye hook with a medium worsted weight yarn. You can begin with a chain four or five and slip stitch to the first chain to create your center ring for crocheting into, or you can make a magic ring, which I'm doing, to work my first round of stitches into. Now, this pattern can be worked with any yarn weight, but make sure to pair up your yarn weight with the correct hook size. Not doing so may make it pucker or wave as seen here in this triangle, okay? So make sure you're using the right hook size for the yarn weight being worked. All right, so we're gonna begin with a magic ring. We're going to chain one and then we're going to this chain two right here now because when I slip stitched, um, made my magic ring, I ended up with one chain, so I chained one extra. These two chains count as my first double crochet. So now I'm going to double crochet two more times into this circle. Okay, 
like that. And then I'm going to chain three. Now the clusters are going to be the sides where the chain threes will become the corners or the points of the triangle. So I am working three more doubles. I'm going to chain three and three more doubles. The reason I'm doing threes, working in multiples of three, is because we're working a triangle which has three sides and three points. One more chain three. And I'm going to pull my magic ring just a wee bit, and then I'm going to slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet. My chain two is one, two, First real double is right here. I will insert my hook under the top of the head of that stitch. Yarn over and pull through for a slip stitch. And I have my first round. Okay, I'm going to tighten that up just a little bit. So now, just like in working with granny squares on the same side, I need to move my yarn over to this chain three space so I can begin round two. Now this is if I'm continuing in the same color, okay? So what I would do is I would slip stitch into this double and then slip stitch right into the chain three space. Now my yarn has been relocated over to this chain three space and now I can begin my new round. Okay, so round two, we're going to chain two, which counts as our first double crochet. Now we're going to finish this cluster by, by working two more doubles. Chain three for the point and three doubles all into that same chain three space. There's two and there's three. Now we're going to come down the side of our triangle. This is the top point. Now we have to jump this granny cluster below and we do that by chaining two which brings us to the next chain three space point where we will work three doubles. Chain three. And three doubles all in that same chain three space to create our second point of the triangle. Okay, so there's one point and there's the second point. Now we have a cluster to jump over, so we chain two, which brings us to the final chain three space point where we will work three doubles. Chain three and three doubles. That brings us to our final side. We have to jump this cluster right here to be able to slip stitch to our initial cluster. So to jump that side, we have to chain two. And now we are going to slip stitch into the first real double, which is the middle double crochet of this cluster. Remember our initial chain two counts as a double. Here's my middle, here's the top where I insert my hook. Now I'm going to slip stitch to that. The loop on the hook falls over, creating the top of this, the head of this, this stitch here, this chain two bringing it to the height of the double crochet that's next to it. And so there is two rounds of our three double crochet traditional granny triangle. Now let's say I wanted to change colors instead of continuing in the same color. 
So what I'm going to do is just bind off and secure my yarn by pulling my tail through. And now making sure to keep my granny triangle facing upward, all stitches are facing forward or front side. I can choose any corner I want to to begin the new color. Now, what I can do, what I like to do, is to choose a corner away from any other tails that I may already have because I don't want to end up weaving in all my ends on the same side. There's not gonna be enough room. It's gonna to get too thick and bulky. So because I have a tail here, I'm gonna choose this corner over here to attach my new color. And we do that by making a slip stitch on our hook and just doing a simple slip stitch right into that chain three space. And again, we chain two for our first double. And we're going to work two more double crochets next to it to complete that cluster. Now we're still working on our point, so we have to chain three. And work one more three double crochet cluster into that same chain three space like so. And we have our point. All right, so we have reached a side, so we chain two to jump the granny cluster under the in the previous round here. But every member, just like with the granny square, with every round you add, you end up with one more side space that you're going to have to work a cluster into. So after we chain two to jump this cluster, we have a side space that we have to work a granny cluster into. So work three DCs or three double crochets right into that side cluster. Now we have this cluster to jump, so we chain two again, which brings us to the next point where we will work three doubles And chain three. And three more doubles. All in the same chain three space point. Okay. Which now brings us to the next side stitch that we have to jump. So we're going to chain two. And that brings us to a side space, which we need to work one granny cluster in. And at the same time, I'm going to crochet right over this tail just to help anchor it and keep it out of my way as I crochet. And I will come back later at the end and actually weave in the tail properly. So it won't come undone, okay? So our side space, our side uh, cluster is finished. We need to jump this cluster here. So we're going to chain two. And th uh, work three double crochets into this chain three space point. I got my tongue tangled there for a moment. And chain three. And three more doubles for the next cluster, all in this chain three space point. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And now we need to jump this cluster and then work one more granny here, jump this cluster by chaining two and then slip stitching. So let's do that. So we're going to jump that cluster by chaining two. Work a side granny cluster. And we have our last cluster to jump over before we can slip stitch. Don't forget that or it's going to end up kind of torquing it if you don't put enough stitches in. 
So chain two, go to the first real double crochet right past your chain two initial starting chains. Insert under the head of that stitch and slip stitch. And then you will have made a three round granny. I'm going to bind off. Pull my tail through. Ooh, that's a lot of tails. And I will come back when I'm ready to weave these in and block them so they're nice and pointy and pretty for assembling at a later time. So that is how you work a traditional granny triangle with three double crochets in the cluster.